in the word of the Lord, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, uh, verse number 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, and verse number 29. And, and if you haven't been here, we've been uh, ministering. Uh, from the series who's next and really uh, setting up our lives and our hearts to understand that God is looking for some qualified say qualified God is looking for some qualified candidates. It's just not a, a free for all type of thing that God is doing. He's looking for those who are qualified and not qualified based on how good you are, but qualified based on how dedicated you are to the assignment that God, God has placed on your life. Because unless there is some level of uh, weakness, now watch what I'm going to say. Unless there's some level of understanding on what you need God to strengthen you in your your never uh, going to be a candidate for the grace of God. Uh, whenever Paul talks about uh, the thorn that was placed in his flesh and how he besought the Lord three times to remove it, the Lord refused to take that out of it and he says, my grace is sufficient for you. For in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. And a lot of times we mess up with the grace of God because we're trying to be strong in every area and we're never honest about the areas that we're not strong in. And if you are not honest about the areas that you're not strong in you refuse and you restrict the grace of God from coming upon you many of the greatest men and women of God that God has ever used and who God will ever use will be those who are honest about their own structure honest about their own building honest about their own heart honest about their own mind honest about the things that really do bother them whether they tell anybody about it or not are you hearing this? All right. This is the, the mirror of the word of God where the Bible says whosoever looks in the perfect law of liberty. All right. Beholding himself and forgets what man of man he is. Turn around. Act like he don't see what he's saying. Are you hearing this? When the word of God comes before you, it is designed that you might look in it. Glory to God. And not just see the word, but see you as you are. Praise the Lamb of God. And based on who you are as an individual, you go back to God and ask God for grace, all right, to strengthen the things that you are looking at that might not please him. All right, the things that you cannot do. Because, beloved of God, there are things that you cannot do in the natural that you're going to need the Spirit of God. You're going to need grace to strengthen you in. And the Bible says in the book of Acts that grace, grace came on them all. Great grace. Somebody say great grace. great grace. So we're not just looking for uh, just anybody to come. I'm talking about qualified candidates. The word of God says, and I want us, I want us to go back to this foundation. Where the word of God says, study to show yourselves approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What we have stopped doing is we have stopped studying God's word at the level that will qualify us to be next. We have stopped studying God's word. We just study God's word for a message. We just study God's word for something to go to work to the next day to tell somebody that we know. Are you hearing this? But we don't do a whole lot of self-home study no more. Are you hearing this? We don't pull out those concordances and those dictionaries and those Bibles and sit down. Most of us don't do that anymore. And just sit down and study because you want to learn of God. Because you want to learn of his ways and learn of his patterns. We don't do that. We study so that we can seem prolific and so that we can seem ready revelatory to other people glory to God and don't you know you could study to give something to somebody else but don't study to build up your own life are you understanding so you are able to benefit somebody else with the things that you say but you're not able to benefit yourself in levels of growth and development that's needed to position you for power he says, study to show yourselves approved. Approved of what? The assignment. Beloved of God, there's a whole lot of individuals walking around trying to perfect and perform an assignment that they are not qualified for because their studies don't match the level that they're trying to walk on. You're going to have to know what you're saying. You're going to have to understand, glory to God, the context of what the Spirit of God is saying for you at that time and at that season. Some might say, I need to study some more. I need to study some more. Hallelujah. All right, so God is looking for qualified candidates uh, to uh, take this next uh, level, this next position of ownership uh, for the change 
and the impact that the world needs to see at this moment. Uh, how many of you uh, will say that I, I am willing to be qualified? To take ownership of this next level of impact for my family. This next level of impact for my business. This next level of impact for my neighborhood. I'm going to receive the power of God in the spirit realm. I'm going to take the time to study because I'm really, I'm really desirous of God to change my family. I'm really desirous of God to use me in the political realm. I'm really desirous of God to use me in the community. I will take responsibility to see things change whether somebody else doesn't want to do it or not I'm going to take that responsibility beloved of God many people are only concerned about their natural needs or what they need right now they can care less about what's going on in the city they can care less about what's going on in the state they can care less about what's going on in the world because they're trying to get their light bill paid they're trying to get their water bill paid and whenever you've got personal needs in your life God, God sometimes it is the deception of the enemy to get you so caught up on what you need that you can't even tell what the world needs and what the world needs right now is somebody to stand up glory to God be the middleman stand in the gap and take responsibility to bring change hallelujah, yes. hallelujah to the Lamb of God God tells us in Matthew not to not not to worry about uh, the things that the Gentiles seek, not to be concerned about the, uh, the 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 material things that you need. Don't be concerned. Take no thought what you're going to eat. Take no thought what you're going to drink. Take no thought what you're going to put on because the day is going to take care of itself. What God says is that for every dispensation that there is a distribution. For every period of time that comes up in your life, there's a there's a mode of transportation where God's Hallelujah Hoshaya that. God God's going to give you provision for the only reason why you're not seeing provision is because your eyes are on the thing that you need instead on the one that can give it to you for every dispensation there's a distribution so you are watching the provision but not watching the provider when he says seek first the kingdom he says get your eyes on me are you hearing this and then I will I will I'll draw things to you are, are, are you understand this? He said the day is going to take care of itself for every dispensation, meaning for every period of time, there's a distribution. When the church of Israel started to uh, cry for food, all right, God told them, all right, all right, uh, God, God allowed the, the manna to come the next day. God told them don't stir it up because if you try to stir it up, all right, it's going to breed what? Worms. It's going to become nasty. Some of the people can trust God. All right, they saw God do it one time, but they can trust God for the next time. And I want to remind those of you who have seen God do some miraculous things in your life that the same God that did it once can do it again. You need to refresh and remind yourself of the continual provision of God day by day. And God's not going to tell you to seek your daily bread if he's not going to give you bread for the next day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Amen. So we've got to get our eyes off of some of these uh, micro things and worry about things that are on greater levels than that. Get your eyes off of just your home and, you know, give that to God and work, work, on, work on the assignment that, God, that God's given you in that home. But I'm talking about don't be so consumed with your relationship with God that everything. See, see this is what I want to talk. I want to I tell this. Sometimes uh, our relationship with God is filtered through everything that we need. That means that we only have a relationship with God so that we can get the things that we need. You, it would amaze you how many people only serve God to have a distribution channel for things they need in their own personal life they can care less what God tells them to do they can care less how God tells them to minister to somebody else go to God and you better not ever ask them to give their shirt off of their back or their coat out of their closet or their shoes off of their feet to give somebody else because that is not why they serve God they serve God for the clothes and for the shoes go to God for the pants are you hearing this they serve God for the cars and the houses but you've got to have such a relation with God that you are not serving God for those things. You are serving God to be used of God to change the world. You hear what I'm telling you today? So God is saying, I want some people that are qualified. I want some people who will serve me to impact the world. I want some people to take responsibility of what, uh, for what I'm showing them. I want some people to take responsibility of the vision and the dream that I'm opening up in their heart. 
Amen. All right, now, 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 this is the thing that I want to tell you. That, that anybody, we, we want to say, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next in line for a miracle. I'm next in line for a blessing. I'm next in line for advancement. You know, you slap your neighbor three times and you turn around and run into a wall. And then you roll under some chairs. I'm next, I'm next, I'm next in line. You throw on your Shirley Caesar CD. I'm next in line. Oh, I understand this, glory to God. But let me tell you something. If you are next in line for any one of those things I named, you better understand that you are next in line for the process first praise the lamb of god you think you're just gonna run up into it god got undeveloped unperfected you think god just gonna give it no 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 when you say i'm next in line you better believe you're next in line for process too Praise God. Let me tell you, in the natural, you do not want, glory to God, just a, you do not want some of these foods and some of these meats and things that haven't been purified and processed through some level of things first. You don't want that. You don't want it straight. Y'all ain't talking. At least I don't want, I don't want it to come straight from the farm on my plate. I want some things to have happened in it first. At least douse the thing in some water. Do something with it. Are you understanding? And what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes we look at the process we go through as being a bad thing. When God processes you, it is a great thing. Because God processes you so that you won't be like some of those people that get the blessing and then the next day they don't have nothing to show for it. See, processing does more for the way you think than with the things that you have. Because, beloved of God, if you change the way you think, what you have will prosper. Did you hear what I just said? I said, if you change the way you think, what you have right now will prosper. God, if you change the way you think, God will give you strategy on how to perfect and multiply what you have right now. So you don't always have to look for extra. Y'all ain't talking. God will give you a strategy to multiply what's in your hand. If you change the way you think, but if you don't change the way you think, you'll throw out what's in your hand and then you'll just be looking for the next handout. Y'all don't want to hear me. But if you change the way you think, y'all ain't talking here. See, with the prophet, and was that Second Kings chapter 4? The prophet had to get the widow to change the way she thought about what she had. She went to him and said, my sons are being sold into slavery. And what she said, I have nothing in my house but just a little bit of oil. But just a little bit of oil. But just a little bit of oil. And that's what sometimes we say. God, I have nothing but this. I have nothing but $5. I have nothing but $10. But if you go to God, don't let, if you don't look at it like that and say, God, change my mind concerning what I have. Not the Messiah. I don't want to put a butt on my provision what I want you to do is give me a strategy on how to multiply flip this money some more that way you don't have to look out for nothing you don't have to be watching for the mailman every day y'all ain't talking cause you know I've got something in my house that God's giving me a strategy to multiply and sometimes God people can't even sleep good glory to God cause they listening out for the mail truck <laughs> are y'all hear what I'm telling you use what's in your hand somebody said I need to use what's in my hand I'm not going to I'm not going to give God a butt that prophet had to come and tell her no no don't say but uh, a little bit of oil huh he said he said see what the only thing you need is see you don't need see, see uh, you don't need anything else lady all you need is some containers huh all, all you need is some, some expanded levels of distribution. What is that Isaiah chapter 54 says, enlarge the place of your tent? Get ready for, get, make some space in your life. See, kick out some of those unproductive places and make some space. And that's why we can't see manifestation sometimes because we got all these seat fillers in our lives who are doing nothing for us. They ain't encouraging you. They're not supporting you. They're not helping you. You can't count on them for a prayer. You can't count on them to fast. You can't even count on them to smile in your face. Y'all ain't talking. They don't even try try hello Messiah but if you get some of those people out of your life and make some space that's all God needs Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. he tells her go borrow some vessels and don't just borrow a little bit borrow as many as you can now now listen if you will study the text if you study the text he didn't tell her to get some neighbors who who had oil and tell them give you the oil he said the only thing you need is some space some distribution. Some of you can't hear God for strategy because your mind is so clogged up. Get some space. 
Glory to God. Stop taking things on your plate that you know is only going to limit and restrict your space to think some more. Sometimes you think you're being productive, but you're not being productive. You are clogging up your mind. And you can't hear from God. You can't think. You can't talk to people, right? Y'all ain't talking here. You can't love the connections and relationship you have right now because you are bringing so many other things. Let me tell you, the answer to your problem is not inviting more people in your life. The answer to your problem is trying to clear out and only have people who are divinely connected to what God is calling your life to do. You always want to make a friend. You always want to do this. You always want to be this. Let me tell you, there comes a time where you're trying to be productive in God. You're not trying to be the most popular one on the job. You're not trying to be the popular one in the crowd. You are trying, you Messiah. You are trying to clear out so you can hear God for your life, your family, and for the world around you. That's right. And you need to make some space. Amen. This lady went and brought vessels. Are you hearing this? And all she had to do was pour out what she had into those spaces. Now see, when you start to clear out some stuff in your life, and you start to make room for stuff, you won't have to, you won't have to look for much. All you have to do is keep using what you have and putting it into the space. Now you all have gifts in here. You've got talents in here. You've got businesses in here. You've got business plans in here. You've got inspiration in here. And you're asking God for you asking God for a low level thing. Let me tell you something, beloved. Provision is a low level thing to God. That's right. What, what is high priority to God is strategy and information and revelation. That's what God values. God values an idea. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all are you hearing this? I said God values an idea. God can care less about provision because that's a low level thing. God gives provision go, go to God at a wink of an eye. He don't even, he, he's, not, he's not up there going to God moving the heavens just to give you bread. That's nothing to God. That's automatic. You are his child. The Bible said it's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Bible said if your son asks you for a stone or you're going to give him a serpent God said I'm going to give you whatever you need. You don't even have to worry about that. I need you to be concerned about high level things god give me an idea steve jobs had an idea y'all ain't talking here he didn't have no money he had an idea mark zuckerberg had an idea y'all ain't talking i ain't talking see see we're so you know why we can't make provision we can't make moves because we're so we're so low level thinking we're so low level thinking that's that serpent type of transportation creeping on your belly y'all ain't talking here that's a low level creeping on your belly looking for crumbs that comes from somebody master's table y'all ain't talking here today looking crawling on your belly looking for a handout crawling on your belly looking for somebody to pass you something under the table so you don't have to work for what you got hallelujah to the lamb of god you need to pursue god for an idea i know i'm preaching it here god give me an idea give me an idea i'm tired of this under the table type of stuff Give me an idea. I don't want to crawl on my belly. Give me an idea. Give me something. Give me something I could use. And when you start to elevate your thinking, elevate your thinking. Someone say, elevate your thinking. thinking. What's the Bible say? Pause. What's the Bible say? Colossians chapter 3. He says, set your affections on things well above above where what christ sits you think where christ sits he's worrying about provision who's gonna feed them you know provision up there he said elevate your thinking where christ sits on the right hand of god elevate your thinking put your mind in proper position all right so that if you put your mind in proper proper position you'll get revelation you'll get strategy now when god gives you revelation and strategy if you take ownership of what you've seen god will give you provision for it sometimes we don't get provision for a, a revelation because we don't take ownership of it when i'm talking about taking ownership i mean when god shows you say yes lord i can do that yes lord all right i can do that yes lord show me the way i can show me the way this happens and i can do this now watch this is Exodus chapter 25 the Bible says that the Lord wanted uh, Moses uh, to build the tabernacle remember how they came out of Egypt and the Bible said they did not leave out of Egypt empty but they came and they told the, the uh, Egyptians give me your gold give me your jewelry y'all remember that all right and the Bible says that great favor was upon them and they came out of bondage wealthy they came out of bondage wealthy now they had no home to go to 
Y'all ain't talking. But they were wearing gold and diamonds and y'all ain't, are you hearing this? See, see, you're looking for some destination. And the only thing God says is, I want you to hear my instruction, obey me, and I'll have you in process as still blessed. Ooh, I'll have you in process and still able to provide God, God what other people need. I, I, they'll, they'll say, well, 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 well how are you, how you able to give me this? And you're not even where you need to be yet. Why? Because in my process, I heard God. In my process, I had an idea. God, God, and because I took ownership of that idea, see, all God needed them to do was take ownership of what he said. They can be afraid to knock on the Egyptians' door. God, God, they can be afraid to go. They took ownership of what God says and even though they would have to walk in the wilderness they were walking in the wilderness wealthy y'all ain't talking so sometimes you might not see what's right in front of you sometimes you might not understand what God is doing but if every time God gives you an idea if you obey God God will still have you in process and in promise at the same time Y'all ain't talking. Uh, have you ever heard that? God got process and promise at the same time. See, sometimes when people talk about process, they don't even think that you can walk in promise at the same time. But God will have you in process. God will have you in transition and still in promise at the same time. That's why people can't even understand what's going on in your life because you look like you're all the way there and you know you're not even there yet. But they can't tell. I said they can't tell. They can't tell because you're in process and promise at the same time. All right. So they walk out of uh, Egypt wealthy, right? All right. So in Exodus chapter 25, God says, I want a tabernacle. I want to come down and um, uh, minister to you. I want to come down and let there be a physical structure where my presence can come down. He starts to talk to Moses about building the tabernacle, right? Watch this. Exodus chapter 25. He says, go to the, uh, the, the children of Israel and ask them for gold and ask them for these things. All right. That the house of the Lord may be built like, like the tabernacle. Now, and then the spirit of God tells, tells Moses, now I want you to build the tabernacle after the pattern that I'm going to show you. All right, now, now Moses had to hear from God, number one, to go to them and ask them for the resources. He went to the people, now watch this, I'm going to lose y'all. He went to the people to ask them for resources for the house of God. Amen. He went to ask the people for the things they had that the house of God might be built. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't talking. It was theirs because it was in their possession. He said, tell them, ask them for the gold, ask them for this, that the house of God might be built. And the Bible said they gave willingly. Y'all ain't talking. So that the house of God would be built. So he tells Moses, he said, now I want you to build after the pattern that I'm going to show you. Moses has to take something spiritual because God did not drop blueprints down. Y'all, they talk. God did not drop blueprints down and then Moses followed the blueprints. Moses saw it. And through his mind, he had to articulate in this natural what the measurements were. Y'all, right. they talking. See, 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 what you need is, because provision is going to come from those things that are connected to you already in your world. God did not have to send out emissaries to another country to get provision. God had already given the people provision. That's why when God sends resources and seeds in your life and provisions in your life, you can't be quick to spend it. You've got to ask the Spirit of God, is there a plan that comes after this that I'm going to need this for? Did you hear what I just said? I, I said when God sends provision in your life, when God sends increase in your life, you're going to have to be spirit led and say, Father, this came out of nowhere to me. It just came suddenly. Now, is there something that you're going to tell me to do tomorrow that I'm going to need this resource for? Because I don't want to spend all of this today and you need me to buy a house tomorrow. I don't want to spend all this today and then go, God, you want me to invest in a business next week. Y'all ain't, ain't talking here. And that's what we do. We don't even ask the spirit of God. We get it and then we spend it and then we when the opportunity comes, you don't even have resources to walk into it if you wanted to. They, they came out with the wealth. And I'm sure they would use some of it to, to barter or to buy from neighboring cities or whatever. But God had a greater plan. God had a greater plan that they knew of. So they had to be responsible 
to hold on to it. Against what they might have wanted to do. You, you hear me? See, this, this is where it gets sticky. This is where your will has to be disciplined because sometimes you have to, you have to respect the spirit of God and why he does things. And why, why, God, why are you having me on this job? Why, why, why are you giving me this? Why did you have them do this for me? Why? 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 What's the plan that is connected? Because let me tell you something. God wants you to enjoy life. God wants you to enjoy things. But beloved of God, sometimes there is a plan that is connected to why God does things when he does it. And you're going to have to be mature enough to stand and wait until you know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. So Moses had to be responsibility, responsible to take what he saw, think, strategize on what he saw, bring it into this natural, bring it into the world. See, the revelation that you're going to get, beloved, it's going to come in a supernatural form, a spirit form, a supernatural form, a spirit form, a supernatural form, a spirit form. And you're going to have to process it through your natural. That's why studying is important. That's why educating yourself is important. Whatever your assignment is, get educated on it. Because what you're going to get now, you're not going to get carnal information. Now watch what did Paul said. Paul said the Holy Ghost is going to teach you comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to give you something spiritual. That's why the Bible said the carnal mind cannot discern the things of the Spirit of God. The things are spiritually discerned. So God's going to give you something supernatural that you're going to have to have enough natural knowledge... To, to articulate what God is showing you. In the word of God, you find when the prophets had visions and dreams that he would show them symbols and things that they had to un understand and they had to be able to interpret because they were educated in the natural. Amen. Amen. Oh, are you understanding this? So that when God showed them it in the spirit, they had enough education to say, I've seen it in this way. And I, I know, I know where to put the pieces at. And sometimes the only thing we have is good dreams and good visions, but we don't have enough natural education. Are you hearing this? And I'm not just talking about school. I'm talking about being educated on what you're believing God for, what your hands are connected to, knowing how the thing works. Are you understanding? So that when God shows it to you, immediately it'll bring a connection in the natural. One of the most frustrating things that will ever happen in your life is to get this good spiritual revelation from God and it not be able to benefit your natural because there's nothing in there to work with. Are you understanding this? All right, Paul talks about praying in the spirit. And Paul says, I'm not just going to pray in the spirit. He said, I'm going to pray in the natural too. Why? Because my mind needs to be made fruitful. I need, to, I, I need to know something in this natural, glory to God, above what I'm knowing in my in, in tongues. Are you praying in the spirit? See, your natural has to be fruitful. Amen. You've got to educate yourself. Someone say, educate yourself. Educate yourself. So, so Moses had to take revelation, take ownership of that revelation and articulate it. What, what, what do you think about Noah? God gave Noah that big plan. Right? The Bible said Noah found grace in the eyes of God. All right, God gives him a, give them, gave him a plan. All right, God already had the wood all right around him. All right, Moses had to take, Noah rather, had to take those measurements and he had to build it according to what God showed him. Now, what God has shown you, have you waited, have you spent time in the presence of God to get, Lord God, the, the, the strategy on how this thing is going to be built? And then God's going to send resources to apply to the idea. Now, I'm going to venture to say, I'm going to venture to say that much of the provision that we have seen, much of the provision that we have not seen is because there's no idea to be connected to it. Come on, Pastor. Come on. There's no idea to be connected to it. There's no growing idea growing idea i don't care if you had that business plan from 1979 every year you should be adding something on that 1975 business plan you don't let that thing uh, collect dust why you've got so many years of relevance that you need to add to it Amen. because you can't lord god you can't perfect you can't utilize a 1979 business plan when you've got over i don't know how 30 something years in the between That's right. are you understanding that you need to add on it that God can send fresh resources towards it. Is this helping you? Yes. Amen. 
So take ownership of the revelation. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 29. God needs somebody to take ownership of it. God says, I've got an idea. I've got an idea that I have not told anybody about. I heard Anthony talk about it today. I have an idea that I haven't told anybody about. And even if I did share it with somebody, they weren't responsible enough to handle it. They were fearful. They were timid. They lacked confidence in it. Now, I, I want to give you the opportunity to do it. Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 29. He said, the secret things belong unto our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. This means when God showed you something, when God reveals it in the context of this message, it is for you to take ownership of it. When God shows you something, it is just not because God is wasting time and he just wants to give you a dream. He just wants to give you a vision just for the fun of it. When God shows you something, it is because he wants you to manifest it. He wants you to press into it. God doesn't just show you something just for you to have a pipe dream or some fantasy. God says, no, I'm showing it, all right, so that I can reveal, reveal to you that this is a part of my plan for your life. Amen. He said the secret things belong to our God, but those things, uh, those things that are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. God wants you to start to build an inheritance for your children. The Bible said a good man leaves an inheritance for his children. And inher inheritances are built on powerful ideas. Inheritance is built on powerful ideas. One man, one man taking the initiative, one woman taking the initiative to be responsible for an idea. All right, that connects them to resources that fund the generations after them. Are you understanding this? We're going to have to be responsible for what God has shown us. What has God shown you? Somebody said, well, God hasn't shown me anything yet. Well, sit there and wait and ask God for an idea. Give me something to work with. And sometimes it's already in our world. We're just, we're just thinking of something minor. We're thinking of, see, see, you cannot belittle what God has given in your life as a small cloud. In 1 Kings chapter 18, I believe that was, Elijah says, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I see a great future, a great vision, a great dream manifested. He tells the servant to go up and look. The boy comes back. The man comes back and says, what? I see nothing. He says, I know what I hear. Go look again. He went and looked again seven times. On that eighth time, he says, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Now, it wasn't a large cloud. That would make other people excited. See, sometimes we put aside the visions and dreams because other people aren't excited about it. Wow. But it's your attention on what you've seen that causes that thing to grow. The Bible said while he was still talking that the clouds started to swell and get black and filled with rain. Because he focused his attention on what he saw. He, see, see, you're going to have to show God that I do see something. I do see what you're doing in my life. I do see how you're changing things for me. I do see how you're changing my mind and the way I think. I will not ignore the small things that you're bringing in my world. I'm going to start to honor them as significant change. And the Bible said before he could finish talking, thank you. Before he could finish talking, he said, you better run because the rain is going to come. And God gave him so much power, Anthony, with one idea that the man was on a chariot. And the Bible said Elijah outran the chariot. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? See, the power, hallelujah, the power of one idea from the Spirit of God will cause you to supersede people that had help in doing what they're doing. One idea. One idea. I want you to honor God and, and his ability to provide the things that you need. But I want you to focus your time on getting a strategy from God. I don't care if you're working for somebody. I don't care if you're owning your own business. I don't care if you're in your home or whatever it is. Because God can give you an idea in your home that will set your life up forever. Amen. 
<laughs> Y'all here talking. See, 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 there's nothing insignificant in God. The only thing God needs is somebody to say, God, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm a part of, you could prosper me right where I am. Glory to God. You, 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 you can finance my entire life with favor right now just by walking in the right place at the right time. Give me an idea to talk to the right person at that moment. God, you can finance my entire life with favor. There is nothing, beloved, I don't care what you have going on. I don't care where you live, what you drive, where you work, what you got in your bank accounts. There is nothing nothing insignificant in God. God will set you up with what you have. Glory to God and you'll never have to worry about what you don't have another day in your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Honor God. That's why Paul says this. Paul says this and I'm going to close here. My time is up. Paul says here. Paul says, I have learned in whatever state I find myself in, therewith to be content. He said, I know how to be up I know how to be down. I know how to be full. I know how to suffer need. He said, I can do all things through Christ that does what strengthen me. He says, wherever state I am, whatever position I am in life, if I focus on the Christness of that moment, if I focus on the Christness of that moment, he'll strengthen me and I'll begin to accomplish things that I should not be able to accomplish, Lord God, with what I have. I'll be able to accomplish more than what other people have. And they've got the provision. Elijah outran that chariot. Many of the things that you'll do in life. Now watch this. Receive this word. It'll supersede people that had inheritance naturally. It'll supersede people that had these large crowds of support and things. If you focus on an idea, if you trust God every day, and the disciples came to Jesus and says, Lord, teach us to pray. So he prays our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. If every day you wake up, you go into that day understanding that God's going to provide for you. And that throughout that day, you never again have to ask God to do it. Trust God to say, God, I'm yours. I'm a part of your kingdom, and it's your responsibility to provide the things that I need. Now, the other things that you want me to do, I need to focus on. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Amen. Trust him. I mean, I mean, trust him. Trust him. And when you trust God, see, 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 in the natural it would irritate you. It would irritate you as a natural individual if you have responsibility or connection to somebody to provide something to you. And every day they come to you every 60 minutes saying, you will do it. You're going to give me that lunch. You can give me that lunch. You're going to feed me today. You're going to feed me today. You're going to feed me today. Would that not irritate you? You're going to feed me today? You said, no, no, of course, you're my child. I'm going to feed you today. No, you're going to feed me today. I'm hungry. You're going to feed me today. Especially if you know that they have what you need to be fed. That's right. And don't you know that's how we sound to God? I'm your son. You're going to feed me today? I'm your son. You're going to feed me today? I'm going to feed you. You're going to do this? You're going to do it? See, see, all of that is taking your time. And that's why you can't work your business. That's why you can't work your idea. That's why you can't get educated. That's why you can't love each other. Because all that right there. huh? Because constantly worrying about natural needs will make you frustrated all day long. Amen. You'll have a bad attitude. You'll be snapping on people. Y'all ain't talking. Well, if you ain't call me about no money, I don't want to talk to you. I, 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 no, 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 no. I, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get this light bill paid. Don't, no, no, no. Don't ask me how I'm doing. How I'm doing? I'm, I'm about to be having no lights. See, that, that make you snap on people. Yeah, big guy. Won't it? That's right. <laughs> are you, are you understanding what I'm telling you? But see, start to build up your relationship. See, that's why you, you can't have, I said earlier this message, I'm done. My time is up. That's why you can't have relationship with God for those things. Because that's the only thing that your life will be consumed about. But if you have a relationship with 